Pisces, hi. So this is going to be a reading for the month of November 2024. And I'll uh, do the reading for you and then I'll close it off with a oracle card. And these are general readings, so they may not resonate for all of you. If they do, there is an extended. At the end of the video, you can check out the link for that in the description box below if you want. Let's see, Pisces. All right, the overall energy for the reading, the moon. You're the only sign that I prefer seeing this to start off a reading because all of the other sign, to me, the moon means shit. It's like, okay, I don't know what I'm diving in here. And this applies to you as well, but at least this is your energy. You know what I mean? It's, it's you. So I'm like, oh, okay, so we don't know what we're diving into, but you'll tell us in a minute. Um, okay. I don't think so. I don't think in a minute. I think this is one of those where on the surface it looks a certain way and then we dive in deep and then you'll let us know. Okay. Uh, starting off the reading, you get the Emperor crossed by the King of Wands. So ho, ho, much confidence here. Where is this coming from? So much confidence of getting stuff done, you know, taking care of things. I would assume that's you. That's your confidence here. Okay. Why is it? Is it? We'll see. Uh, but it's a lot showing up like that, at least. Um, in your focus, the Eight of Wands, um, there's an energy exchange here that's happening. And I feel like that's where you're focused at in the sense of maybe your... Oh, cricket. Is that a cricket? Yeah, it's a cricket. Oh my god, it's huge. Um, I feel like it's it has to do with you just opening yourself up to working with others, to socializing a lot. There's a lot of that involved here, uh, where there's a lot of openness from your end. You know, you're not just, oh, you know, I need some time for me. And um, you're in that opposite extreme of opening yourself up to all sorts of good things from what I'm seeing, but open. Um, in the recent past, the Six of Cups, there's a soul connection that is showing up there. In your strength, the Six of Pentacles, there's again that energy of balance, of equal give and take. So you're definitely exposed to sharing your energy with other energies. That could even mean spending more time with animals, um, talking a lot more with people, um, just open in general. Um, in the immediate future, the Judgment card. You may have to make some decisions here. Um, supporting this reading, the Two of Swords. That's where I see a little bit of worry about something. Uh, maybe it's based off of the fact that you may have to make some decisions, some choices there. The energy that surrounds you, and you may not be aware of it, the Four of Wands. Now, that could talk to a long-term commitment, to marriage. It could also bring up the energy of um, bonds you have with others, you know, all sorts of connections that I see popping in here because you're open to something, you know, so and to a lot of it could be all sorts of energy of partnership surrounding you at this time. In your hopes and fears, the two of wands, you got to wait for something by the looks of it. Um, and for the potential outcome, the seven of pentacles. Yeah, something is working out. Something is definitely building up here for you. So, cool. Well, let's clarify. Let me do the moon. The Knight of Wands, the Ten of Wands, the King of Pentacles. Is this like a team effort kind of a thing? It could be tied up to a project you got going on or work or something. But it, it almost feels like a team effort here. You know, in the way it's shown up, like you're you have this drive and you're pushing forward no matter the challenges, no matter what shows up. But at the end of the day, it's almost showing up like you're part of something um, like there's a team effort behind it all. So it could be, but you're showing up quite passionate, quite, you know, driven here. Um, let's do the Emperor. The Four of Cups, the Knight of Pentacles, the Nine of Wands. And there's those times in which if it is a team effort, if you are dependent on other energies at play, and those energies kind of screw up here and there or don't do something that you may not like in a particular way. And it's like, 
you get upset a little bit at times, but I don't feel like you realize you, initially you're showing up in this kind of like all the way, like, yeah, let's do this. And then if somebody does something that you don't a hundred percent agree with, it upsets you. And from that, you kind of slow down in your energy. I don't know if you notice that for you in the sense of your participation, your drive, your everything kind of slows down and you're not showing up, which makes things even more difficult, you know? Um, okay. So let's do the King of Wands. The Six of Wands, the Moon, the Sun, and then there's the Drive. <laughs> it's like there's two sides to you. The side that shows up for this because you're very passionate about it and very open to it and you want the best for the situation. And then there's the side of, oh, but I'm upset. Not realizing how much that actually influences you and takes away from you personally in how you approach this. And then not to talk about the whole team effort aspect, you know? takes away from that as well so on a personal level it takes away from you on a bigger picture level it takes away from the whole thing uh, that you're part of you know and it doesn't feel good at the end of the day so let me see the eight of wands in your focus the seven of swords the four of wands the six of pentacles so you're kind of dreading something here. It's almost like we need to talk, you know, kind of a deal. Um, I feel like you're the one that's bringing it up or something. Like we need to talk about something and we need to be honest about it and we need to lay it out on the table. And, you know, and then even though it's coming from you, potentially you're the one that's kind of trying not to last minute. It's like, but I... Mm, I don't know if I want to. And again, that could come from maybe you're upset about something. And if you're upset about something, maybe you think that you don't have the best approach for the situation because you're upset, you know? Um, so even though, yeah, you may want for things to be out in the open, for everything to be exposed here, because you're upset, you may feel like the way you're going to approach this is not necessarily the best because you're coming from I'm upset, you know? So I get the excitement of wanting to know the truth and laying it all out on the table. But at the same time, if you feel that you're quite pressed by some energies and you're not clear in your own energy, I would say wait a little bit. You don't need to, you know, as, as much as I get the excitement of wanting to let it all out, if you're coming from a place of a different place than just steady and balanced in your energy, I would say wait a little bit until you do come from that place of balance, you know, because this is very important to you by the looks of it. You keep on showing me that, you know, whatever this is, whether it involves one more energy or several, because again, it gives me the sense of team effort here. Um, for the Six of Pentacles in your strength, you get the Two of Swords, the Magician, the Hermit. Yeah, um, I can see where you're at from your energy. The problem with the situation is that you can't. Um, there's a little bit of blockage there in terms of how you would show up for yourself when you're in tune with yourself and how you show up now when there's a little bit of chatter here. And the chatter comes from the fact that someone did something here at some point that you may not have agreed with. And that left a mark there for you. And it does need to come out in the open and it does need to be talked about. But if you find yourself in a place of boiling about it, don't. <laughs> don't do it then. You know, wait, give it a day, give it two days until you kind of calm down and then you can come and address this from a different space. You know, from a more honest space and a more, this is where I'm at. This is what's happening, you know. Because um, I see I see little bits of blockages along the way for you in terms of I see where you're at. I see what this means to you. I see what where you want to go with this. But it might block you, that whole sense of you holding something in there. And again, it does need to be released. I'm not saying hold it in. Don't, you know, 
Uh, just do it when you find yourself in a more balanced place rather than when you hear this running like crazy there or starting to. Um, that's not the place that you want to let something out necessarily. I mean, if you have someone, you know, to let it all out so that it bounces back to you and that you hear yourself in that space, from that space, then yeah, by all means do it. But not to try to work on a situation. Uh, not until you get clarity. Let's do the judgment card in the immediate future. You get the judgment card, the tower, the five of swords. Again, this is the place in which some decisions are being made, some choices are being made, and it looks like it's not the best place. And it looks like it's not the best place because I see the place in the places it should show. So if this is running the show from a place of insecurity, fear, uh, deception, um, doubt, all sorts of things like that, and that's the place that you're making decisions from, you can imagine what those decisions are going to be, you know? So you're still in a place right now of don't rush. Why is this? I feel like it's a collective kind of a energy, though, where none of you are giving me... You're kind of running through things in such a way that I don't see a gap that you could take for time. And there's always a gap for time. But surrounding the November readings, at least, it almost feels like you're making this passage of time so fast that it's like, where do I place you so that you can wait a little bit? It's almost looking like you guys are not giving yourselves time. A little bit of time outside of this experience that you're dealing with so that you come back at it with clarity. That could mean even one day. You could take off completely from this and come back the next day, you know? Um, because if you don't, then it builds up into this whole blah, 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 which again, I just mentioned what that would be. Fear, insecurity, doubt, all sorts of energies like that. And when you pile those up together and you start making decisions from those places, you know? So before you get to this place, you can avoid this energy. You don't have to get here. You know, but make sure you give yourself a little bit of time um, before making any kinds of decisions. If you're unclear, if you feel like there's no, if there's a little bit of a question mark in there at all, give yourself some time. You know, let's do the two of swords for the supportive energies, the lovers, the eight of pentacles, the justice card. That's the thing. It's very tricky because when you're in that space, you think you know exactly what you want. It's that whole fast, 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 fast. When you're jumping to conclusions super fast and you think this is what I want, this is what I need, and it's driven by this energy of almost anger underneath it all, that's not what you want. That's what your anger wants. That's what your mind tells you you want. But that's not truly what you want. If you would pause in this energy of excitement over what it is that you truly want, and come at it the next day, you'll see that's not what you truly want. You know? Um, so don't get caught up in this trap. It's basically self-entrapment when you lost yourself in your own mind. Um, you just need some time. For the Four of Wands and the Hidden Energies, you get the Strength card, the King of Swords, the Page of Pentacles. Okay. I see what you want out of this. I, I can see it, and you would be able to get to this place, and you know how to get to this place because you've done it before, where you did give yourself some time. Um, you're showing me here, yeah, I, I know how to do that. <laughs> then do it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, you're not seeing that you know that, you're losing sight of that because you're all caught up in these energies. But I, I can see what you want, and you know exactly what you want too when you apply this giving yourself enough time to come back to clarity and balance where you feel like your mind is not trying to take you for a ride, you know? Let's do the two of wands in your hopes and fears. You get the ace of wands, the king of wands, the three of wands. Yeah, time. Time, time, time. 
And you know that, even from a conscious perspective, you know. You're like, I know. Well, then do it. <laughs> you know? Keep on showing me. I know, I know, I know, I know, you know. From an energetic standpoint, you've shown me here, and I'm like, you're not seeing this energy, but then you're showing me from a conscious perspective. Like, oh, I know exactly what I need to do. Then do it. I'm going to keep on saying that to you. I'm going to haunt you with that. Then do it. Um... Okay. Because this, this is, I mean, it's starting out from a very small energy that's kind of not addressed. And then it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger to the point of you lose control over it. And it occupies rent in your head there, you know, free. It's not even paying rent. And then underneath all of that, you're giving me a sense of, oh, but I know how to handle that then do it um let's do the seven of pentacles in the potential outcome the queen of pentacles the five of cups the world card all right you're doing it finally you're getting in that place of i, I need some time for myself and it seems to be very difficult because sometimes it is you know but you're still doing it and you're closing off quite the potential ugly cycle or could have turned quite ugly. I don't think it's going to turn um, ugly. I feel like you'll catch it in time, you know. But again, all you need to do is recognize that time frame of I need to, to take a day or two or whatever I need to, to gain clarity here because I feel like I'm losing myself in my own head, you know. So... Okay, let me see what the universe has. The Three of Wands, the Six of Wands, the Seven of Swords. Why are you in this rush? Why, what, what are these energies? Why is the collective showing up as, I don't have time. I don't have time. Where the fuck are you rushing off to? You always have time. None of us have time, truly, because time is an illusion. What is this? And I don't even see this energy running as if they're rushing anywhere. They're just kind of giving me this blah statement of, I don't have time. Well, if you don't have time for this, what would you have time for? If you don't have time for this, that means you're having time for something else. What is that? You know? Because there is time. There's always time. That's the excuse that I keep on getting. I don't have time for this. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And you know that that time would give you better results for this situation. And you're still kind of like, oh, I don't have time. Yes, you do. You make time. <laughs> if you don't have time, you make time. Um, Divine Animals Oracle. Let's see what that wants to bring up for you. Man, you're going downtown with that bone. You get cat intuition number 37. Use and develop your intuition. Your gut feeling is correct. You are not your mind. Develop your magical skills further. Introduce more play into your life. Mythos. The Egyptian goddess Bast is the embodiment of cat energy, a very ancient deity. She was originally a lion goddess, somewhat like Sekhmet, but her leonine nature diminished in favor of the cat energy. A very ancient goddess, Bast is, I don't know, Bast, Bast is featured in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Statues of Bast usually depict either a woman with a cat's head or a regal, beautifully formed cat with royal symbology and sometimes a lion mask, signifying a hidden, fierce nature. Bast offered protection um, to her worshippers in everyday life rather than in battle, as this was Sekhmet's role and she was the goddess who helped bring messages and guidance through intuition, but also demonstrated a loving, playful energy. The 
historian Herodotus traveled to Egypt in the 5th century BC and told of his experience at the festival of Bast at the riverside town of Bubastis. He spoke of people traveling down the river by small boat or and playing and jesting with the people on the shore as they passed. Once they reach the temple, they make a festival with great sacrifices and more wine is drunk at this fast than in the whole year. Sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. In ancient Egypt, domestic cats were very much a part of city and family life. In a time when plague and disease could not easily be halted and could easily spread, the services of a fine feline hunter were appreciated. Cats became symbols of protection and royalty and were even mummified as companions and protectors of the dead in the afterlife. In Norse mythos, cats form famously, famously pulled the goddess Freya's chariot, surely an activity not for beginners. Cats have always been associated with the witchcraft of many traditions, especially in Europe. It was said that a black cat could give you good or bad luck, dependent upon your culture, and that cats are able to see spirits and travel between the world of the dead and living at will. It is this association that made cats a target for burning and killing in the Middle Ages and encouraged encouraged the plague that was spread by fleas carried on rats. The animal. Next to dogs, cats are the most popular domesticated companion animal. I say domesticated lightly because scientists believe they haven't quite completed the domestication cycle as yet, since they tend to survive well on their own in colonies and still retain a very independent nature. Humans have been a part of cat life for in excess of 10,000 years, according to the latest archaeological information. They were invited in not just because of their appearance, but because of their abilities as mousers. The Egyptians loved their house cats so much that if they died, there would be an official period of mourning that included eyebrow shaving, and their cat would be mummified and taken to Bubastis. Cats come in all shapes and sizes, and humans have spent a lot of time honing and creating specific breeds. However, from a Siamese to a Maine Coon, they are all feline and are all scientifically known as felis catus. Cats are small but athletic and are able to jump great distances. They are hypercarnivores and use a variety of vocal sounds and purring, to the delight of humans and other cats. Scientists are still debating about the evolution of the purr, but I think most cat owners would understand that it encourages us to give them more of the treatment that makes them purr in the first place. In the main, in the main it is a sign of contentment and happiness. The magic. Cat magic can be used in a variety of ways, including to increase happiness, curiosity, a sense of play and lightness, and somewhat paradoxically, when we may be wanting to connect with someone who has passed. Cats are considered guides to the underworld and can help with mediumship. If you have a cat yourself, it is said that you have the blessing of any goddess who loves cats, and so this can only enhance your life. Symbology, almond shaped eyes, woman with a cat's head, chariot pulled by cats, vertical pupil, black cats. Status, of least concern, just like a cat. Anyways, cool. That's what I have for you. Hope this helped and I'll see you next time. Bye.